Thank you for joining Kava Ministries. Today, we continue our series of Voices with Our Fathers. We're so excited that you have joined us today, and we are even more excited because we are live with um, one of our fathers today. And before I introduce him and move forward, I just want to say to everyone, thank you for all of your support with our series of Voices of Our Fathers. Uh, continue to support Kava Ministries. Find us and like us on Facebook and on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe. And also let this be a conversation, a platform, um, this series be a platform for you all to start having conversations about the importance of fatherhood mm -hmm. and um, or their lack of what it means to be a father. This is the reason why we're bringing this content to you is because um, we don't have an opportunity to hear from, from fathers as we should. You don't hear from fathers that often in society uh, or in the body of Christ. And so this is why we're bringing this series, Voices of Our Fathers, uh, to you. As I said, we invite you to use the content that we, that we have produced for you to use as a platform to have a conversation um, to start uh, with someone else, whether it may be a group or uh, a ministry, a, a father's ministry or a man's ministry within your, within your church or within your community, please, please use this content for that. With that being said, I'm gonna to introduce to you today, uh, Dwight Brown. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Dwight hails from, right now he lives in New, New Albany, Albany, Indiana. Uh, and Dwight is a really good friend of mine. And I think it's appropriate that we hear his voice of what fatherhood means and let him share with us his walk through as being a father. I'm gonna introduce you again to uh, Brother Dwight Brown and go from there. All right, appreciate you sharing your platform with me today. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I, I like what you do, I really love what you do. Now. Keep encouraging us and inspiring us to, uh, to keep striving, so. All right, all right. Uh, so I'm Dwight Brown. I am a father of four, um, three girls and a son. Christy is the oldest. Mm -hmm. Christopher, as you know, I lost my son in Afghanistan. Right. Um, Mar Marcel is the third, and uh, Mary Hunt is the baby. Okay. So, uh, well, yeah, one more from there. Well, from there, I heard you talk about you lost a son and you have yeah. my condolences. I know that's a challenge. No matter how long ago that's been, it's always right. a challenge with that. Um, so can you share with us, Dwight, your journey of being a father and some of the things that you have taught your children that you don't want them to repeat and make in their lives? Absolutely. Well, you know, as a, from a recovering addict's perspective, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't always there. I can't, you know, I ain't on front. I can't sit up here and right. <laughs> say that uh, uh, I was, I wasn't present. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, right now, I'm rebuilding my relationships with my daughters. Okay. Um, it's very important that a father is present, available. He's a provider, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Protector. Yes, he is. And uh, so. You know, my ex-wife, I have to give her a shout out. She's the one that held it down. Okay. You know, actually. So, uh, uh, but as a father, I'm rebuilding those relationships now. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, everything is, uh, it's doing, we're doing well right now. So, so explain that. Can you go a little deeper into rebuilding the relationships, um, re being a recovering addict? Um, what is that? How has that been in rebuilding that relationship? Where does transparency, how important is transparency in that process? Well, just being available, mm -hmm. first of all. You know, uh, when they call, I'm, I'm there. Okay. I'm available. Okay. I'm reliable. Um, in the past, obviously, like I said, you know, I was in and out of the house. We separated a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, rebuilding it today, uh, like I said, I'm available. They can count on me. Uh, when, like for example, my daughter may need me next weekend, mm -hmm. and I got to go in there and uh, uh, see what she needs me to do in there. And I said, since she's in the process of moving, so I'm gonna go be present, like I said, and, and help her out there. So, um, 
and just being, like I said, available and present, listening, um, passing on my wisdom, you know, to them. So that's that's important about even just because they're adults, you know, they still they still need our input and our wisdom. Absolutely. Uh, as a father of daughters, what would you um, what would you if you had to talk to your younger self? being a father of daughters. Mm -hmm. What would you say to your younger self um, in that aspect? What would you say to yourself uh, coming out of recovery? If you were in recovery at a younger, at a, maybe in your 20s yeah. or 30s, um, what would you say the lesson that you learned and what would you tell yourself about that lesson that you learned? Oh, well, uh, well first of all, I had to surrender to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I kept running it in the ditch. Mm -hmm. And then I find, finally got tired of being miserable, you know? So I surrendered to that pride, you know, the pride of, I got this, ain't nothing wrong with me, mm -hmm. never. So once I surrendered to that, um, and I got saved in my addiction. Okay. So when I reconnected to God mm -hmm. and then embraced recovery and the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, things started getting much better. Mm -hmm. And through that process, um, I finally became thoroughly convinced that I knew I would never go back because of the relationships that I built, the trust that I regained mm -hmm. in them. That was a big factor. Um, my peace and joy, mm -hmm. I don't want to compromise it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's very important to that's me. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. absolutely. So now my kids, uh, from their perspective, uh, they have reconnected with me. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so now they can pick up the phone, call me at any time. Uh, I'm ready to go and, and be with them whenever they need me to. You know right. what I'm saying? When in the past I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't present and available. Have you have you been able to have that honest discussion, being a father with your children, uh, being in addiction and coming out of addiction? Have you had? Those I did. Yeah. What were they like? Even along the way, when I was in it, I was honest with them, mm -hmm. and I was letting them know they couldn't understand as little kids. Right. But I was letting them know what their dad was going through. Mm -hmm. And so once they became adults, um, and they can wrap their head around, you know, addiction. You know, it's an epidemic, obviously, Absolutely. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so now they can see how their dad has transitioned right. and progressed. Right. Okay. And uh, they they actually see the peace over me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So uh, God is amazing. Once I I advocated, you know, myself all the time, uh, surrender to uh, God and recovery. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, coming being uh, coming out of recovery and being in recovery now? Um, do you think that more fathers uh, who had the opportunity to come out of recovery? should have that transparency with their children or That's even if true. they don't have children with those in the community how would you be the what would you say to younger men or just men in general who are fathers who are coming out of what you've been through well first of all stay plugged in to the fellowship okay. you know after, first of all you have to do that mm -hmm. um addition is too big for us okay. we need each other okay. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so you have to stay connected to that higher power, which I call Jesus Christ. Okay. You know, um, that's what works for me. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So um, <laughs> um, I would say to a young dad, I mean, even if he didn't have kids, he's still rebuilding trust in the community. Mm -hmm. Somebody's always watching. Ooh, that's you see good. what I'm saying? That's so good. Uh, you just, you want to be that leader. That's what you're going to turn out. You want to be a leader in your community, and they're going to be looking to you. There's, like they said, it takes a village. There's mm -hmm. always going to be kids that look at us, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and see how we're walking, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, have you had the opportunity to, why, other than your children, have you had an opportunity to be that voice in your community? Absolutely. And just right here in New Orleans. Okay. You know, um, you see the kids, and then, you know, it's kind of sad that you see a kid. Uh, maybe elementary out here running around and they should be in the house. Mm -hmm. And we can't really talk to them the way we got it. Mm -hmm. 
Right. You know, like in our neighborhood, <laughs> our, our neighbors would tell that boy to get home right. and get your butt on that porch before those street lights come on, right? <laughs> like, you know, that's how we got it. Uh -huh. But, you know, I would, you know, look around for a parent, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And some of them I had even seen before. Okay. And I would just say, you know, whose kid is that? Mm -hmm. You know, he's out here, you know, getting dust dark. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. um, but just the way I carry myself. Okay. You know so, so, you, so your 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 way of giving back to the community is living your life by an example. Exactly, living you know, life by example, mm -hmm. and uh, just living an upright life and doing the right thing. Right, people see that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So, your other communities—I know you're not originally from New Albany. How how were you affecting your other community that you were originally from? Same way. Same way. Yeah, they see me like my family back home. Mm -hmm. They see, you know, bright eyes and, you know what I'm saying? They, right. they see that, like I said before, I'm present, I'm available. Mm -hmm. um, I communicate differently. Okay. When, you know, back then, you know, I was just all about what can I get out of them? Okay. Now I want to sit and talk to you. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh, just like when I met you, you know what I'm saying? No. That's, that's a reward of recovery, meeting people like you. Oh, oh thank you. Yeah. You've been blessing as well. Thank you. <laughs> Um, now, since you're in recovery, what are your goals as a father? I know you, I've heard you say clearly that you want to be available. You want this important for you to keep your word yeah. and make sure that you're present. Um, those are wonderful goals and, and things to do. But beyond that, what other, what other goals would you like to, to see yourself uh, succeed in as a father? As a father, um, I would like to... Well, actually, I've been thinking about, we yeah, have been talking about me moving back closer to them. Okay. Really. Because um, mm -hmm. I would like to be closer to my grandsons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I would like to be closer yes. to actually, you know, saying that, you know, my son, he left two daughters here. Okay. He left two daughters when he passed away. Mm -hmm. And he had them right before he went into the service. Um, his wife. She got pregnant right before he went to the service. So he has two, two teenage daughters here. Okay. And hopefully, <laughs> with this platform, you know, they may see this mm -hmm. because I haven't talked to them in a long time. And I would love to, you know, reestablish contact with them. Sure. Uh, granddad loves you. He misses you. Tell and, him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so uh, uh, I just want to be available to them. You know, I mean, around them, you know, kids, they need their grandparents to. They absolutely. So, I heard you mention about grandsons. How old were your grandsons? Uh, Zion is 11, and uh, Knowledge, my oldest daughter named her son Knowledge. Okay. I said, you know, you need to put a lot of pressure on that boy, right? <laughs> right, right. But uh, no, that's a great name. Uh -huh. And um, so they live out in California, though, so I don't get a chance to see them that okay. often. Right. But uh, I love them. You know, just as much as I love them all. So, if you had to have, if you had to speak to knowledge um, right now as a, as a male and a grandfather um, being in recovery, because you know he's at that age, they start, sure. they start, yeah. they start looking, at, feeling themselves, right? And, and that's the time when children start really experimenting. Right. So, what would you say to him? What would you say to him if you found um, out, or if he, if you thought that he was, or even if he, what would you say, what advice would you give him to prevent him? Uh, stay focused on your education. That's what I say to them mm -hmm. already. Stay focused on your education. Um, uh, whatever your dreams and goals are, just keep your focus there, uh, especially in the classroom. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's nothing going on out here. Right. Take it from me, from experience. Right. It ain't nothing going on out there in the streets. So just stay focused on your education and you'll be able to, you'll be able to navigate your way um, as you get older. Mm -hmm. Then you can choose what you want to do when you take care of that class. Right. You can choose whatever you want, right. career you want to take. With that, within that conversation that you would have with them, how important uh, do you think it is for you to stress the relationship with Jesus on your spiritual Oh, that's our foundation. Absolutely. I would tell them, uh, carry the Lord with you. Mm -hmm. First of all, accept what he did for us on Calvary. Mm -hmm. Right? That grace and that mercy. Right. 
Right. And uh, that's a great foundation right there because life is going to blindside you with stuff. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? We're going to go through some things. And Absolutely. you're going to need the Lord, man. Right. To, uh, and that's what I would say to them. That's how I talk to them. You know, so. And they'll, they'll experience that in their own way as they go. Yes. Do you have those conversations with your daughter as a father? Yeah, and especially I, I, I like to say to her to keep them in the church and keep them involved. Excuse me, in the church and um, and read some words to them. Mm -hmm. That's study good. Some words with them, you know that is saying? very good. It keeps our kid grounded. You know, yes. my mom did me that way too. So, mm -hmm. and my his wife, she did our kids that way. Kept them in church. Okay, your mom's still living, right? She is. Yeah. And I'm quite sure that she's proud of your of your yeah. progress. And Absolutely, she yeah. love to see that. I can fellowship with my mother now. Good, you know, <laughs> I fellowship with my mother, mm -hmm. and that's one of the great rewards of recovery too. Uh, I call and talk to him, and she started giving me her testimony. I give her mine. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. uh, that, that's a wonderful blessing of recovery. It's just, uh, just a brand. It's a, just a, a brand new life compared to what it was, so, and it's been four years now, so, you know, I know. Four well, years. Look back. That's, that's um, almost, a, that is a milestone, going on a milestone. Yeah, four and a half, actually, uh, June of 22 would be five years. I'm excited for <clears> you. <throat> Thank you. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're, the way you're paving it forward and being transparent, not just with your children, but even here on this platform as we discuss mm -hmm. it. I'm quite sure there will be uh, other young men and young ladies too that will hear this and see this. Yeah. And uh, will be able to, some may be able to identify. Absolutely. If they're in that situation or if they know somebody, perhaps a father may be in that situation. And that's what it's all about, just in inspiring somebody else. To. Mm -hmm. And like I said, surrender, mm -hmm. because it's just too big for us. That's my, uh, that's what I would say to anybody. And I have before, you know, like people hanging out in front of stores and stuff. And I don't want to hit them over the head with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I just say to them that, hey man, um, it's too big for us. That's what I learned. Right. And you obviously know it's a fatal disease. Right. So, you know, something I'd say, surrender to that pride. It's interesting that you said it's a fatal disease because some people don't look at it as a disease. Uh, they look at it, oh, it's just an addiction. So elaborate some more on it, why, why you say it's a disease. Well, it's a disease of the mind. Okay. And um, it, for me, I can speak for myself. Mm -hmm. it, it, I was escaping my reality into, a, and I thought that I had to have it okay. because I, I didn't want to face my reality, which was um, the irresponsibility and the shame and the guilt. The responsibility is not being present and available, right? Okay. So, oh, yes. okay. and then all of a sudden, you just you get into that um, trap, if you will. It's, you know, you just you're so shame. You just want to keep escaping, but you just have to surrender to it. And once you go through that process of treatment mm -hmm. and recovery, and mm -hmm. then you know you just start building your confidence in yourself and the Lord, and uh, this. You can handle anything in life that comes at you, you know, from there. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Dwight, we have enjoyed thoroughly your voice as a father. Thank you. Um, we continue to pray peace and blessings over you and your journey. We thank you for um, allowing yourself to be transparent and to share thank you. Um, your viewpoint about fatherhood and the importance of it. And even the, the pitfalls that come along with life. Sure. We really appreciate it. Uh, continue to support Kava Ministries, Voices of Our Fathers. This is a series. We'll continue the series through the month of October. Please allow this platform, use it. Um, we, we hope that as you use it, it will uh, bring on intelligent conversation, perhaps uh, resolve some issues that need to be resolved. And most of all, bring each other together. Um, you can follow us on YouTube, subscribe and like us. Um, you'll get notified every time we are on, whether it's Voices of Our Fathers or, or other things that we have. Um, and you can also find us on Facebook. This has been Combat Ministries. Uh, peace and blessings to you all. 
We'll see you next week.